welcome back to the spooky book club. So today I'm doing a couple of different things. This video I'm doing the December 2020 book discussion and review. So we are reviewing and discussing Voices in the Snow by Darcy Coates. But then I'll also have my January spooky book club picks. That video will be up today as well. So it should already be up. So if you're looking for that, that's a whole other video. Anyways, today on this video, we are reviewing and discussing Voices in the Snow by Darcy Coates. And if you're new to Spooky Book Club, I kind of do just a general review, just if it's worth reading or not, and a couple of thoughts here and there. And then we get into the spoilers, which I'll let you know when it's happening. So if you're not here for the spoilers, that I'll just, I'll give you a little time to get off of here. And that's our discussion portion. And I just keep it pretty open. And we just discuss openly in the comments, whatever you thought about it. And I just, I make some notes every time I'm reading our books of the month, things I want to chat with you guys about, ask your thoughts about, and then you can either respond in the comments or do your own thing. It's pretty open. Anyways, let's get into the general review. I have a lot to say about that. Maybe I don't have a lot to say about this book. It's either one or the other. I'm not sure yet. We're going to see where this goes. But let's start with the general review. So uh, Voices in the Snow by Darcy Coates was the book pick for December. All right, so the description of the book didn't really go into a lot of detail from what I remember. I think it just said this girl gets in a car accident and she wakes up in this spooky mansion with this guy who's watching over her, taking care of her. And she doesn't really remember much, so she's piecing things together. And she doesn't know who to trust, I think is, is kind of what it said on there. And there's something I feel like I need to say about this book. I feel like I need to warn some people about this book if you haven't read it yet, because I feel like it really is gonna matter whether or not you pick up this book and whether or not you're gonna like it. I don't know, I feel like I say, oh, this is a ghost story or this is a, a gothic romance or whatever. This story is very heavy on the apocalyptic side. And I say this and I really, and I just felt like it needed to be put out there because I wish I would have known this before. I mean, I probably still would have picked it because I want to read a whole bunch of different types of books in Spooky Book Club. But for me personally, apocalyptic books are not my favorite. So I think I would have maybe prepared myself if I would have known this. I just wanted to put it out there just in case you're like, yeah, those aren't the type of books I enjoy. Or, oh my gosh, yes, I love those types of books. I've been looking for new, new apocalyptic style books. I do like that this is a different type of scenery than I've seen with other apocalyptic books. So this has more of a spooky feel. It has like a haunted mansion feel. It has a lot of very eerie vibes where I feel like a lot of apocalyptic books or movies are kind of more, you see a lot of urban settings and a lot of um, you know, like cities getting destroyed and this and that. I really don't love being super critical of books because I know everybody's different. So if you like apocalyptic books and you want a new spin on the apocalypse, or maybe you like gothic spooky house books, but you don't mind the apocalypse stuff, like that kind of sounds cool, and you want to read something a little bit different, this is definitely one of those books that is unlike anything that I've read before or seen before. I would say give it a read because it's spooky and it's something different. So I always say give it a read. <laughs> Even if it's not my favorite, I'm like, you should read it. I can't be too hard on this book because the ending of this book saved the whole story in my opinion. So the ending was worth the, the read in my opinion. Also, if you're looking for a series to get started on, this is a series. So now that the ending happened like that, I have to read the next one. I can't just not read it. So, so that's my general review. That's actually a longer general review than I normally give, but that's all I gotta say about that. Okay, uh, anyways, I'm gonna pull up my notes while I'm doing that. If you don't wanna hear the spoilers or you didn't read the book or any of that, then I'm gonna give you a second to get off of here. Uh, just so you don't hear any of the spoilers. And then if you've read the book, we can discuss all the spoilers. My notes are open and I'm ready to get into it. All right, so what did we think about Voices in the Snow? First of all, I guess first of all, did anyone else read the other book? It's not required, you don't have to read the other book. I just reviewed the book that won, but I just wanted to put it out there that I ended up reading The Winter Sister. I read it first and read this one last so I could have this one fresh in my mind and I can't stop thinking about The Winter Sister. I thought that was so good. It was so good. If you read it and you read both the books, let me know in the comments which one you liked better or if you liked either of them or neither of them. You can talk about that too in the comments if you want. If not, don't worry, we didn't 
well, we it didn't get picked, so we're not reviewing that one today. But honestly, I had a hard time with this one. If you skipped over the review part, I kind of mentioned it, but I just struggled to connect with this book. Don't know what it was. I don't know if it was the apocalyptic thing or if it was the characters or I think it was Claire, if I have to be 100% honest, and the apocalyptic thing. So I don't even know where to start. I'm just gonna start somewhere and then we'll branch off somewhere else. Okay. Okay, so the first half, I liked the concept. I really liked the whole, the, you know I love a good hag that comes out of the shadows and it's crouched down and has the scraggly hair and is all like got these bones coming out and little like I loved all of that. So this whole element of the supernatural thing coming out of the shadows and kind of stalking Claire a little bit, uh, really, I, I loved that part. I loved all of it. And I feel like Darcy Coates is really, really, really good about writing in characters and their details and like what's happening with their jaw and their teeth and their smile and their, like you can really, vi like at least in my opinion, I can really visualize it. That's the one thing I love about all the Darcy Coates books we've read. But with this one, I think what lost me early before the apocalypse stuff. Like I wasn't really expecting zombie werewolf corpses. Before that even happened, I just was not feeling connected to Claire. And I feel really bad saying this because I feel like there might be people out there, this is why I don't love giving any, like having beef with things or like giving a lot of negative reviews on things. Cause I feel like everyone is so different with how they connect with things. And some people may have really connected with Claire or the love story. I just, I don't know what it was. I felt like she was really superficial, really self-serving. I was really struggling to buy into the romance aspect as well because I just found Claire so unlikable. I don't know, maybe I was just in some mood. I'm not even like that as a person. I usually don't find people or characters unlikable and I found her incredibly unlikable. But anyways, then you had, I couldn't, I didn't know if it was Doran, Duran, Dorian, Dor, Doran, Dor, Doran, Duran, Duran. <laughs> I don't know what his name was and that that's another thing that right off the bat kind of threw me and I don't I, I'm not even mad about it but clearly I'm mad about it <laughs> okay and then once Claire and Duran or Doran Duran Duran got together and like that romance it just felt so contrived it felt really stiff to me I just and maybe it was just because I was just not feeling clear in the beginning like her escaping like there was no real to me nothing looked that threatening for her to just run away into like 10 feet of snow if i were a rational human being and i had to weigh out my options between am i gonna die here or am i gonna die in a blizzard i would probably given that it's like a warm cozy room and nothing has happened to me i'm not shackled down nothing's going on i'm not even locked into a room the house isn't even locked i can freely walk out of here would probably tell me that i'm probably gonna die out in the snow before i'm gonna die inside and then when he gets mad about all the dirt that got dug up he's like leave and she's like over dramatic, I'm leaving. And like goes out into like 30 feet of snow to go to her car. And don't get me wrong, that had to happen for the story to unfold the way it did. But I just found it, I just found her irritating. She irritated me. I, I just couldn't get on board with Claire. And even this whole like, oh, I wanna go fight with you and I'm gonna go get these zombies. And it's just like, girl, like, yeah, I don't know. I just felt like she was, the whole time she was overestimating how helpful she was and how she could do this or that. And it was just like, know your limits, man. Like know what, know what you're doing because now you're just taking advantage of somebody who's a really nice person and he will literally be there to save you every single time. But that doesn't mean you should just go do careless things so he saves you, you know what I mean? And then even when she acted like she cared about him, like, you can always talk to me. Oh, of course he can talk to you after you've made all of this about you and put his life in danger like 3,000 times, you know? I just felt like Duran or Duran, Doran, Dorian, felt like he deserved better than than Claire. And I'm just gonna put that out there. So I thought just me being definitely hypercritical of a character, but it made it really difficult for me to connect with the character. But it's not all bad. So I will say the things I liked about this book. First of all, I really liked the whole idea of thinking that, or maybe you didn't think, I don't know, I guess I should ask this. Did you think that in the beginning when all the hags started coming out of the woodwork, 
literally that they were ghosts or did you did you think they were zombies because i zombie didn't even cross my mind i thought the weather had more to do with the apocalypse and that people were just dying because they couldn't get food or resources or whatever I didn't think it was gonna be a full zombie apocalypse happening here. So I really liked that the way that the hags were kind of described almost seemed like they could be ghost-like and then and they went into the whole like uh, zombie apocalypse thing. And then also the secret passageways in the house, the secret doors and the, the, and the tunnels and whatever. Uh, loved everything about that twist. I was really excited about like when they go in there and then all the, I'm just imagining the zombies grabbing at them and like looking for them at every turn. I really liked that part. Um, and also the idea of not knowing at any given time where the zombies were because you don't know where the doors are or where the pathways lead. That's really creepy to me. Um, I also really liked the twist with the mom. Well, the mom has these spider legs or cricket legs or what were they like crab legs no what were they like insect legs i think is all they said just like these little spidery looking spindly legs that was so creepy especially towards the end when they're uh they only fight off a couple zombies and then she looks up and they're all kind of hanging onto the rafters on the ceiling that to me in a movie would be so creepy i was just imagining it i loved that part and they kill she kills the mom i loved all of that then the ending happened and i'm like are you for real this had to happen this happened while this book was not one of my favorite books by a long shot that we've read in book club the ending was probably my favorite ending we've had in all of book club like this ending because it's a series which I now have to read the series even though I don't like apocalyptic books. Here I am gonna read the whole series because that ending was, what? What did you guys think? what do you think of the ending? Let me know down in the comments. I knew that was gonna happen. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. I knew Beth was gonna come on and be like, are you there? And I knew it was just gonna end. I, I it like sparked in my mind at a certain point and then it kind of got lost when they found out that um, Madeline Doran's or Duran or whatever his name is, his mom, once they found out that she may or may not be dead, or zombies took her away, we don't know what happened to her. I was a little distracted by that so I didn't get fully into the mindset of Beth on the radio. But then here comes Beth on the radio and then the end, book is over. I'm like, what? You guys have to tell me down in the comments what you thought. I was screaming. I have to know what happened with Beth and where she's at and what's happening and her story. So now I gotta read book two. So that's where I'm at with that. All right, so let me know in the comments how you reacted to the ending. First of all, with the whole Madeline situation, do we think she's alive? Do we think she's dead? What's happening? I feel like she has to be alive. It only makes sense. She's like the villain of all villains in this book or this series. I feel like she has to live on. And then what did you guys think about Beth at the end coming through on the radio? I... I, there's not been one ending in book club that I have literally audibly screamed. I was like, I'm not screamed, but I was like, what? 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 And also really quick, there was one other thing I wanted to mention because it kind of stands out to me with Darcy Coates. So and the other, if, you, if you've been around here where we've read Darcy Coates before, has anyone else noticed that there seems to be a trend with this hag older woman figure motherly figure usually that is horrible so i don't know if there is just like some inspiration there in darcy coates life that is is happening or if maybe darcy coates just really likes the whole mommy dearest kind of storyline i've definitely noticed a little bit of this kind of matriarch evil matriarch in all of Darcy Coates books, but I haven't read them all. I've only read the ones we've read in book club, so I could be wrong. Right, anyway, so that's all I'm gonna talk about. I'm sure I missed something in my notes and I just went on a whole tangent, but just let me know in the comments what you thought. Did you like the book? Did you not like the book? Did you feel connected to it? what do you think about the characters or um, 
what was your favorite part, your least favorite part, all those things, whatever you want to talk about in the comments. Anyways, I'm really excited for January's book pick. So um, if you haven't voted on those yet, the poll is over on the community tab where you can vote for which book you want to read for January. But yeah, I mean, I thought that was a fun ride. Even though I didn't feel as connected to it, I never, like I said, I never regret reading a spooky book. Anyways, that is it for this book review and discussion. Hope you enjoyed December's book of the month or at least just enjoyed discussing it. If you didn't give it a thumbs up, say hey ghoul hey down in the comments because you know I love talking to you. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.